you know, it, it had to happen. If I'm doing literally every single episode. Yep, hit this one. Code of Honor. This is a very interesting one because there are a lot of things with this one that make it feel very much like an MMO fetch quest. It really does. You have a basic mission, which is ex extremely simple. Pick up a some vaccine uh, for Anchilles fever so, so that you can take it to the planet Styrus IV. Why you need to buy it from the Ligonians? I mean, good question. Not important, though. To be quite, quite honest, if I was going to do something like this for a TTRPG, I absolutely would think up a reason that is, you know, at least something you can give people because bad re uh, reason or not, you know, you can always use the uh, whole logic of this is the part that Starfleet told you about it. And um, while you might not have um, a full understanding, you know, the way uh, Star Trek logic usually works, no one ever does because sci-fi nonsense reasons. Like, what is in, in Chile's fever? Why is it that species on planets that aren't in Chile's are ca catching it? Hmm. Anyway, though, this is a weird society because of the fact that they have a uh, bizarre set of gender rules that Okay, this episode uses a lot of analogies for real-world cultures on Earth. But one of the things I like about it is that it doesn't try to play any of them straight off. It's not copying any single specific culture on Earth. Exactly badly or otherwise, which is the aspect of it that I personally found to be the most interesting. Now, the Ligodian culture is annoying as hell. It's designed to be because they're the obstacle in, to getting the vaccine that needs to be taken to Styrus for. Thus, as the obstacle to the uh, party completing their mission, the Ligonians have to get in your way. A lot. I mean, this is an e e episode that has a considerable amount of hand-to-hand -hand combat in it. And it's not necessarily even uh, real fights, because they actually have a holodeck training program as part of it. Yeah, that's uh, another thing is that the Ligonians are supposedly a warp capable civilization. They are apparently not a Federation member, and the Federation is trading with them in order to get the um, vaccine they need for the outbreak of whatever fever on Styrus. Do we know anything about Styrus? No. Uh, although, uh, it is apparently um, a planet that was expected to have a lot of deaths if the vaccine was not delivered in time. Well then. So, the thing with the Ligonians, though, is that it's basically random bullshit, the uh, society. Because... Every time you find out some new rule about Ligonian culture, it doesn't make sense with the previously established ones, and that makes it a bit, a bit strange in order to try to figure out exactly what to do. Now, from an in-universe perspective, this is a side effect of the fact 
that the Federation does not actually have dealings with the Ligonians on a particularly regular basis. Thus, Federation citizens, as a general rule, have no reason to learn about Ligonian culture because most Federation citizens don't even know who the Ligonians are. Now, the Ligonians are an example of near-human uh, aliens. Because you take take a close look at this, you know, all of these gentlemen are Ligonians. Now, note that they have a variety of, you know, skin pigmentations, but all on the on the rather dark side with a certain identifiable set of facial features that, you know, some humans have facial features like that, but most don't. And yeah, um, people from like like Ligon are tend to look like that, and not like other things. Now, it's not actually as particularly well established exactly why it is uh, like that just um that they are which to be fair simply having uh, a tng and tos would establish alien um species using weird rules that don't make sense in in real life but Hey, if it's an alien, at maybe possibly that this is part of what makes them different from humans, because like the Kess and the Prit are one of the most uh, egregious examples of this. Is that they had this strange hairstyle where apparently their hair just grew naturally like this, where most of their hair was one color, like almost completely black, and then there's this streak that's white. Why? It just goes that way, naturally, seemingly. And that was part of what made them different from humans. Is it something that makes sense by real-world rules? No, but hey, we're talking about science fiction. So these guys, they look um, similar to humans, very, very similar to certain humans, not all humans. And that's what defines them as in terms of how they look, anyways. Their culture is, now people will make analogies to African cultures, but several of the things that they uh, have in their um, repertoire of random bullshit are all actually like Native American customs or, or something like that, because none of them is, tr is actually like particularly uh, close to real world things. They're just like vaguely similar to real world culture things, which makes it feel more alien because if you you don't have to follow a real world set of rules, then, you know, the random bullshit makes some sense. And of course, the whole thing of like, oh no, no children. Oh, but Wesley's not a child anymore. It's it, it's time for him him to learn how to be a real Starfleet officer. Hmm. Yes. Shut up, Wesley. Anyway, though. And yes, it's a Wesley Crusher episode. Thankfully, we don't have to see him much in this episode, anyways. So, the thing with the Ligonians, though, is that. And this is something that I personally would um, emphasize if I was to actually use the Ligonians themselves and not just make up a different random bullshit alien race. Because seriously, this is a race that was never seen again. Probably for good reason. There's dozens more. Anyway, though. We are here for... A, a, vaccine for and Chile's fever. The Ligonians, for some reason, have a um, massive amount of the vaccine and enough boxes of it that we can uh, treat the entire planet of Styrus 4. 
if we can get the Lygonians to actually hand it over. This is one of those things where I personally find it to be rather strange that they've decided that they would rather do the random cultural bullshit before handing over the vaccine for treatment because it just doesn't make sense for a, um, shall we say, advanced culture to behave this way when uh, emergency medical treatment is being paid for. Like, why are they doing this to decide if we're worthy to acquire the vaccine? What? I don't get it. Really, really don't get that. And that's the uh, core aspect of the episode that made it so bizarre, is that the Ligodians are doing whatever sort of uh, respect my feelings dance instead of what they had agreed to do before the Enterprise had even shown up. Because, yes, they had discussions with the Federation prior to the Enterprise showing up. It's not like the Enterprise showed up completely unannounced. They came here for a specific reason, and the Lagonians were like, yeah, sure, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll negotiate. But somehow Picard and company are forced to handle the final stage of the negotiations personally for reasons. Anyway, though, so the civilization is actually shown as being something that's reasonably advanced looking. But when I say reasonably advanced, I mean by real world standards, not by Star Trek standards. Because quite frankly, by Star Trek standards, this looks rather pedestrian. And not all that amazing. I mean, good, sure, sure, we can call it good. Definitely, that looks like a, you know, inhabited planet. Um, yeah, these look like Adobe brick buildings, uh, uh, plastered, uh, to um, make them uh, rain resistant. This doesn't even look like, you know. Star Trek style buildings. This is more like the sort of thing you would find on Tatooine. Eh, anyway, though. So, and Chili's Fever, because this is the key MacGuffin uh, of the plot. This says that it's highly contagious uh, and presumably um, something that is a viral in con contagion. Here we have a picture of the pathogen, but um, I'm thinking that's supposed to be a virus. Now, one of the things that's interesting uh, about this is that, one, they have the thing with Cold Station 12, and with where they have like every pathogen they can, you know, put into Cold Station 12, and it was one of them. I'm guessing it's a disease that people tried to uh, eradicate. I mean, much like, you know, in the real world with certain diseases, they literally did everything they could to completely erase every possible trace of the disease from existence so that no one would ever catch this horrible disease again. And then, you know, it gets replaced with a new version of the common cold that's slightly more infectious than last year's strain. Just slightly. Hmm. Now. Uh, notable here is that Ligon isn't the only place that makes the vaccine. It's just the only one that um, has enough that is able to be relocated to Styrus 4 quickly enough in order to contain the uh, outbreak on Styrus 4. This is, um, I'm not going to say a problem, but it is the plot fiat that um, drives this episode. 
and you know it, it's basically this whole like uh, you as the gm are like all right here is your mission uh today uh whether you accept it or not uh this is your mission today uh -huh. it sucks to be you anyways but yeah it's like this uh particular uh disease was apparently deadly and um the, in the they were expecting to have several million people die of the disease if they failed to uh, vaccinate everyone. Which, of course, would seem to imply that the people of Ligon were handing over millions of doses of vaccine. Not just, you know, uh, enough to treat a single, you know, small settlement. No, 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 no. We're talking like mass, mass uh uh, dosage uh, for Styrus 4, which would explain why it was so difficult to acquire a large enough supply. Uh, they just didn't have it anywhere else close by that had, you know, say a hundred million doses uh, that they could uh, hand over. And that is seemingly the entire reason why we're at Ligon. For whatever reason, the Ligonians have it. Which, admittedly, does actually give you some in information about Ligonian technology. Because one of the things that comes up in the ritual combat stupidity is that the Ligonians are actually a race that regularly makes use of blades that are coated with deadly neurotoxins. So despite seeming like a backwards culture in certain regards, because they're having a fight to the death for reasons that makes no sense in real world logic terms, um, Despite that, they're using weapons that, while derived from primitive designs, have been modified to use weapons and technologies that aren't actually as primitive as they look. Like, you know, it's not a simple steel uh, mace. It's actually a high-tech metal. And again, the spines are all coated with, with deadly neurotoxins. Accidentally touching one of them could kill you. And, you know, intentionally injuring someone with one of them. <laughs> oh, yes. That's kind of the entire point of the duel. Now, that said, it doesn't really tell us a huge amount about their culture, but it does seem to suggest that they actually do have some skill with the whole biosciences aspect of things. Why exactly they would be like, they would mix that with this kind of dual of honor system doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And, you know, the whole thing of, like, why would one of the Ligonians take Tasha Yar prisoner when they're in the middle of doing negotiations for, I feel the need to reiterate, selling to the Federation millions of doses of a vaccine that is needed for emergency medical treatment. And they decide that they would rather do duels of honor over um, whatever random bullshit and delay the vaccination efforts. <laughs> yeah. See, again, this is one of those things where it, it uh, crosses the gap from amusing and quirky aliens to annoying aliens you would prefer to 
shoot to death instead of talking to them again. Which I don't think is what the, the people who wrote the episode were actually trying for, but yeah, it kind of got to that point. At any rate, though, that's my thoughts on how to handle this particular episode. It's like the idea of, of doing uh, negotiations for an emergency supply of a uh, rarely used vaccine. Yes, that is actually a good idea, honestly. It's the weird cultural whatever nonsense that made the episode dumb. It's like the various characters in the episode, a lot of them have re reasons that are poorly explained for why they do what they do. And thus, these reasons are, well, they come across as very bad because of how poorly explained they are. And that makes the Ligonians as a culture seem like amoral jerks because of the fact that while they do uh, claim to have reasons, the handful of reasons that they actually exhibit for what they do are feeble pretenses. When you give feeble pretenses as your logic for why you are not um, handing over the vaccine like you had previously agreed to, and are instead going uh, on some weird side quest involving a fight to the death using neurotoxin tipped weapons instead of doing medical uh, humanitarian aid why what is wrong with you people it it, it gives you the um shall we say negative opinion of the Ligonians as a culture shall we say hmm. At any rate, though, there is a lot of things you could do with, with them, not in this context. However, the episode doesn't actually give us a, a whole lot of meat uh, to uh, sink our teeth into with Ligonian culture. They get used as an example of an alien culture that's annoying to deal with and doesn't really go past the annoying to deal with part. Because the solution to the problem is to do something that shifts the balance of power in Ligonian politics and thus frees up uh, the people on Ligon that we wanted to deal with to uh, deal with us in the way we wanted to. And yeah, the person that Tasha Yar kills with the neurotoxin is actually someone who was quite important on Ligon. And having her get killed like that uh, radically defined uh, Ligon uh, social status because of the fact that they actually treat those honor duels more seriously than Klingons do. And thus, for her to lose one meant that she's, you know, treated far less uh, loftily than she was before. I guess you could just bluntly put it. At any rate, though, like I said, there's things you could do with Ligonian society, but you would probably be better off making up your own aliens so that you don't have to try to remember what uh, the random nonsense uh, been spit out uh, when creating the Ligonians the first time. And also, why bother with the Ligonians? Now, if you actually have a good reason for the Ligonians, please tell me. I would love to know because they're like the poster boy for alien race I don't want to see again. However, all alien races have uses. The question is which uses are well suited for the story you want to tell. And since I don't know what your story is, I will have to wait and see what you choose to do. So let me know in the comments what you think. See you next time.